Check it out, today I've got a review of some cheap paint markers. These come in at under a dollar a piece and I've got a pack of 12 here. I wish I could give you the brand name right now, but as you can see, the packaging is a little interesting. All the labeling and whatnot seems to be cut off and you can just see this underlying white color. Uh, I guess we'll just get into it. There's a little warning label up here to follow these instructions to make sure you've juiced the pen right and then store it correctly. Color selection doesn't look half bad. They did show all these online. So we've got gold, orange, silver, black, purple, a little green, red, yellow, pink, darker blue, white, and a dark brown as well. Also seems to have come with a little cloth of sorts. My guess is it's just a little drop cloth. But uh, yeah, who knows? So an overview about the marker body, it's definitely got a metal base. These are oil paint markers from what I've read online. It reminds me a lot of CraftSmart kind of tips and I would not be surprised if they're kind of manufactured in a really similar way. SP110 is marked on the side. I couldn't find the SIPA marker supplier directly online, but it seems like a lot of the suppliers are coming out of China. So my guess is that this is uh, produced out there. Like I said before, marks on anything oil based. A lot of things seem to be advertising these kind of more for industrial markers like on rubber and tires and whatnot. The same instructions as the box itself, so it looks like that box is actually intended to pack these despite the labeling being cut off. So we got some European standards and some ASTM standards that it's approved by. So it looks like these are regulated markers by sorts. Now let's crack it open. Cap again feels much the same as a Craftsmart. The nib and valve look a little bit different though. Looks like a pretty standard broad tip nib, not double sided. You might be able to get away with juicing it on this side and using that as a thin tip. Definitely have to give that a try later in the review. Normal screw on these. Yep, pretty standard valve. What I can see from just opening it that it's about half filled with paint and it also seems to have somewhat of a shuttle style mixing ball so that might actually take up a lot of area. At the end of the video I'll dump out one of these and really get an idea about how much that is actually taken up by the shuttle. Now I'm ready to juice these and get on to some testing. Since making stickers with paint markers is pretty popular, I'm going to be using these first off just on some USPS blanks. I'll also be doing some fading and checking in on how they kind of blend with one another, as well as how fast it kind of dries and whatnot. So while blending with the yellow marker, it seems to carry its ink into the other colors quite drastically. It actually made for some interesting blending. I wouldn't say that it was my, my favorite to blend with compared to some other markers. While leaving the orange section a little wet and blending up into the yellow with the yellow marker, it seemed to carry the color pretty well. I'd already outlined it so it picked up some of the other colors as well. And this is pretty common with oil based markers. I find that they actually pick up other pigments a little bit easier than uh, an acrylic or whatnot just because they take a little longer to dry. I think that's just nature of oil themselves. I was able to blend the orange and red just the same. No real complaints there, but I did notice that the white was picking up some of the wet colors quite easily. With the sip of markers, you're gonna want the underbase to be totally dry before going over top of it. The white picked up a bunch of the other colors and took a couple coats to actually correct that. The black set in a little bit, so it wasn't perfectly dark on a first coat. Two coats brought it up to an acceptable level of darkness compared to other paint markers I'm used to using. You can see some overlapping in the green force field, and it's also quite visible that this color sets in too. You can still see the background of the sticker through all the colors but the black. The pigment on these is definitely setting in a little bit. I wouldn't expect much more from this price point, so I'm totally satisfied with this outcome. Having this in mind, I was fearful that the chromes were going to set in a bunch and that it was going to be really hard to outline with the black. Unfortunately, this held true and the black totally set into the silver throw up. I did a test with a second coat of black and it seemed to help a little bit. The opacity wasn't brought up to a level that I'd be happy with saying the stickers completed. Seeing this, there wasn't much hope for the white to do any better. And after two coats, the white also just set in too much to be a nice highlight. The gold had a little better performance than the silver. Two coats of the black seemed to be the perfect amount for a nice outline and I could even get some pretty good cutbacks over top. And although I was able to write over top of the black, it seemed to pick up the colors a little bit more. So I can actually see some darker coatings of the gold just because it's streaking in a little bit of black and kind of mixing on the page. The smell of the chrome colors was a little worse than all the rest, but by no means were those any great. These markers totally stunk up my room and I ended up having to air it out with a fan. Keep this in mind because the smell is definitely not as subtle as a water-based or an acrylic type marker. 
While drawing these first couple stickers, I found that the nibs were pretty hard. They didn't break in much over the time I was using them. But hard nibs definitely work better with oil-based markers because it is generally thinner, because the formula can rely on the opacity of the inks a little bit better. Moving to the black book, I expected to see the color set into the page just like they had on the sticker, and unfortunately that was true. The pink did hold up pretty nicely. There was a little bit of streaking when I was filling, and you can kind of still see it at the end where you know some of the areas are darker. And I'm not really sure if this is a note on you know how well I was mixing it, or if you're just going to get some variation on how the page actually takes in the paint. So seeing that the paper was soaking in a little bit more, all these top details are actually kind of setting in a little bit more than I'd like. It's kind of hard to highlight with whites and yellows when half the opacity seems to be consumed by the paper even after a second or third coat. I really had to rely on the darker colors like purple and black to get some contrast off of the color setting in. The streaking I saw on the green of the first sticker is also here on the paper, but it seemed to be a little bit better and I was only using one pass, so had I gone back over top it might have helped a little bit more. I waited for everything to be dry to use the yellow marker and it, it seemed to re-wet some of the dry stuff and pick those colors up a little bit. This was mostly avoidable by working slow and making sure not to really draw on top of or overlap anything that was already down. I was trying to correct some details up at the top of the E, so this wasn't totally avoidable, but it did pick up some colors and I kind of liked how it spread that and worked its way around the force field to give it a kind of two-tone variation. So by all means, you could leverage this kind of detailing into working on somewhat of a wet palette. This could be a creative quality that you could leverage in your own work if you do like the kind of the blending and the softer color transitions, working with two wet mediums or even one that seems to be dry and gets re-wet when you use the yellow on top of it, you can get some cool effects and whatnot. Although I didn't do any deliberate blending on this piece, I'd assume it to work just the same as all the sticker stuff. The finish of the paint on the page is kind of interesting. Because it sets in so much, it has a matte finish until you get a second or third coat on there. And seeing that there's two or three layers under the outline, the black and purple end up getting somewhat of a glossy finish after those couple extra coats. This is definitely not a great quality because if you end up layering up two or three sections, maybe correcting something, you're now going to have one section that's super glossy and if you only did one pass on another, it's going to be really matte and kind of set into the page. So a primed canvas that doesn't allow the paint to set into the surface would definitely help overcome this. It really doesn't seem avoidable with the smaller process, single stickers and whatnot. Let's flip the nib over and see how it works with the skinny side. First impressions is that the nib does not go as deep into the body, so it's actually a little wiggly and loose at the top. If I wanted to continue using the skinny side of the marker, I would have to commit and cut down the other section, just so I'm not trying to draw with a wiggly tooth on the end here. It really just made for having to be extra light on the nib while it kind of traces and spits a little bit extra. I didn't notice any spitting using the broad side. There's a clear amount of spitting coming off of some of the faster lines. This cuts the width of the nib into about a third of the original size, which for me seems perfect to outline a throwy or maybe do some tags. Seeing that the marker is setting quite a bit to a poor surface, let's give it a try on some vinyl because that's not going to let anything through it. The combination of the smooth surface and the hard nibs makes these markers write extra crisp on something like vinyl. Tags flow nicely and coverage was really great. On top of them writing crisp, I can't even scratch the paint off the surface. Acrylics and water base on top of gloss vinyl would totally just crack off at this point. If you're looking to pick these markers up, I would definitely suggest getting some vinyl alongside it. If I'm really looking for a complaint with these markers on vinyl, it's just that the opacity isn't perfect, but by all means, this is black vinyl, so it's the worst case of all. And it's still something I would consider above average. You definitely have a darker color palette available with these, and the whole range is limited to 12 colors. These 12 markers are not going to overhaul your studio. They can definitely be a supporting role to a bunch of other materials. Not to mention they're a perfectly economic choice coming in at just about a dollar a piece. And be able to go on top of something with a nice base coat. The colors all definitely drew correctly to what was labeled on the body. Now you're going to see quite a few times in this video where the marker body actually comes separated from the top and starts leaking. This is definitely a combination of user error by my part and the threading on the top of the marker. When taking a cap off a marker, it's really natural to move in a clockwise motion. Unfortunately with these markers, the threading is actually also in that clockwise direction, so you're actually unscrewing the marker as you're trying to open it. When opening the marker up, I didn't realize this at first, but if you go and check a lot of your other paint markers, they're actually reverse threaded, so you're naturally tightening it while trying to open it. Inevitably, since you are loosening it, it slowly comes open, and then there's plenty of paint ready to leak out of that seam. Even after realizing this, I thought I was going to be able to keep tabs on it and knowingly not unscrew them as I try and open, but that failed again and I had more paint on my hands. 
A quick solution to this is put a little piece of tape around that seam, which will provide a bunch more resistance from it unscrewing, and might catch some paint if it does start opening. In an attempt to really murder the nib and see if I could get it to flare out quite a bit, I put a ton of pressure on the brick and filed the nib down. It increased the writing size by maybe 50%, but didn't fall short in having flow of paint to the marker. The ends of lines did become a little bit more inconsistent because of the fiber layout is now a little all over the place, but this is definitely an option if you like to customize your nibs a little bit. I'm going to open it up and check out what kind of shuttle they have inside. In an attempt to save some of the paint out of the yellow, I'm going to dump the rest of it into the blue. Oh, we had one of the marbles drop in there. So, looks like they're definitely glass marble mixing beads. I think there's still one left in here. Yep, looks like each of them come with three little mixing beads is why I thought there was more space in there. There's actually quite a bit more paint came out than I expected, so definitely good news. My favorite few markers from this would have to be the silver, the orange, and the black. Silver is clearly because of its performance on the black vinyl. Tags on the black surface look awesome and they're definitely going to be a reoccurring staple in my arsenal. The orange gave a really consistent color on the page, and it was a nice middle tone that I could reliably also cut back with if I needed. Unlike the yellow and white, I might have had to put five or six coats on to really overlap a darker color. With the orange, it was a simple one or two at max. And the black, of course, I can see myself using as outlines and whatnot. With other paint markers, that might help carry its performance just because it's not relying on those colors setting in as much. These markers honestly performed way better than I expected for the dollar price tag. They more than definitely get my seal of approval for both being economic and having some relatively good performance. Might not be able to create crazy masterpieces with these, but they'll definitely work great in a couple very specific applications. I got my pack off eBay, so I'll provide you guys a link over there where you can check them out. Thank you for watching the video. I do tons of reviews like this on other products, so be sure to check some of those out. And to show some extra support, you can always hit that like button or subscribe. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace. In the armory of thought.